Most people, when they think about religion, they think about rules, they think about dogma, they think about ritual. But spirituality is sort of the heart of every religion. And that's where you actually have this experience of connecting to something greater than yourself. And when you're stressed or you're tired or you're worried all the time or you're anxious, it's hard to feel that connection. So I think the biggest thing that's happened when I have taught faith-based courses is that people feel that connection to that deeper part of themselves that uh, is, the, is the part of them that connects to God. And when they feel that, it like renews their whole relationship to their faith, to their church. So my experience is that people get more excited about doing service. They get more excited about learning more about prayer. But I think it's important to move beyond the outer manifestation of whatever religion, if you are religious, and move into that inner reality that the religion is set up to prepare you for. And meditation can only deepen that experience. A lot of times I have people that are thinking about the Course and they're like, both from within the church or outside the church, I am the one person you're never going to be able to teach how to meditate. And because it's based on the nature of the body, the nature of the mind, and the nature of the breath, I've never found anybody that I couldn't teach how to meditate. It's that simple. The breath is something that's with us 24 hours a day. When we put a little attention on it, it's very, very easy to drop into that deep place, even if you're naturally a restless, very active person. You know, the connection between breath and spirit is a very interesting one. In very many languages, actually, uh, the same word can mean both breath and spirit. Spiritus in, in uh, Latin uh, means spirit. It's also the root word for respiration. So the connection between spirit and breath is there in Latin. In Greek, pneumos also means the same thing. It could mean uh, breath or it could mean spirit. Ruach in Hebrew, same thing. And in Hawaii, it's very interesting. If you're going as a tired tourist getting off the plane in Hawaii, they may call you a haui. It's not a very polite term, but it means the one without breath. The literal meaning of aloha means back to the breath. So if you go to a very traditional Hawaiian ceremony, first they'll rub noses with you, and then they'll exchange some breath with you because they realize there's a very intimate connection between spirit and breath. So usually we talk about the physiological effects of breath, but when I teach in the church, um, we look and see, for instance, that Jesus breathed on his disciples to give them the gift of the Spirit. Um, God the Father breathed life into Adam and Eve. Many, many um, connections between breath and spirit, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, which just goes to say, if you learn a, bit, a little bit more about the breath, you may find yourself in a little bit deeper connection with your own spirit. And if you're already in a faith tradition, your spirit and God's spirit will already be, you know, connected inside. So you have a much deeper experience of that. And meditation means many different things to different people. And especially for Christians, and I teach a lot of Christians, they wonder, is meditation a religious thing? Is it a spiritual thing? It's interesting that meditation itself has been part of the Christian tradition since the very beginning. Since people went out in the desert, Jesus went out in the desert and prayed, maybe meditated, spent time by himself. And the early Christian communities were contemplative communities where they all meditated and prayed. And those two words together are a very interesting combination because I've been teaching at one of the largest Christian churches in Southern California for 15 years. And what people have discovered again and again is that the meditation that we teach is a great preparation for prayer. A lot of times when people try to pray, they fall into their monkey mind. They're thinking about something that's happened before or is about to happen in the future. They're restless, they're jittery. They can't settle into a prayerful attitude. But when they practice just a few minutes of this breath work and meditation, it brings them down to a very subtle place in their heart. And prayer just comes effortlessly to those people. So I taught one course uh, at this church, actually to the staff of the church. And then the head pastor said, you know, we want everybody to have the opportunity for this, both as a basis for service, because the church does a lot of service, and also, you know, to help people in their prayer life. So, like I said, we've been going on it now for 15 years, hundreds and hundreds of parishioners of this church. And mostly people don't have problems with the meditation. You know, it's based on the breath, and there's really no such thing as a Christian breath or a Buddhist breath or an Islamic breath. It's a physiological exercise that drops you deep inside. Modern physics says in every, everything in the universe, and including us, there's a level of change 
and a level of changelessness. And every mainstay scripture from every religion in the world talks about this changeless place as a, as a place to feel the presence of God. You can be an atheist, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a Christian. When you go down and, and reach that changeless place inside you, it's going to transform you. And if you hit that place from a perspective of faith, you're going to find a connection with whatever form of God or the divine or whatever you want to call it inside you. So speaking for myself, it's just nourished my life of faith and prayer enormously. And I have very many clergy and people that work full time in the church come back and thank me and say that their faith was strengthened and that they have a much clearer connection with God or with Jesus or, you know, Moses, if you're a Jewish person. And at this church, actually, faith-based people from many different faiths have found out about it and they've come to, to learn there. So there's nothing in my experience of all these teaching, all these people, and in my own experience of my own life, that takes people away from their own faith. It actually drops them deeper into their own faith experience. When I started meditating and having these deeper experiences inside, I went back to the scripture and I saw very many places that sort of supported this inner experience. You know, in the Old Testament, it says, be still and know that I am God. And Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is to be found within you. So the words of Jesus, the words of the scripture came alive to me in a much more present moment way. And that's when the two things really came together. It was only through my meditation really that I had a renewed relationship with Christ and a renewed relationship with the church.